and shook I'm gonna be everywhere you look Don't need no one, nah, I'm good A thousand hours in the studio book The time we took, the way they part The man ain't got a clue about bars Two see skinny little brother from a car Money in a bank, put the money in a jar What? Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it's time for me to bring you episode number 26 or season 2, episode 4 of our Leicester City career mode here on FIFA 16 and um, before we get underway, just got to say a massive massive thank you for the support that you guys have been showing over 2,000 views on pretty much all of the episodes so far which is mad and for over 5,000 on the first episode of Season 2, the finale of Season 1 and the Euro 2016 special is absolutely mad. So yeah, massive thank you for that. Also an apology, this video is about two days late. My laptop had an absolute moment and I haven't set up my new PC yet. Nevertheless, in the background at the moment, you're actually seeing the squad that we are rolling with at the moment. This is before we make any signings in today's episode. Um, but as you can see, it's just been a while since I actually showed you the squad that we're actually using a lot of the time. You can see Kasper Schmeichel there in goal. Uh, Fukurato, Mazuaku and Bruno Perez are our starting uh, fullbacks. Um, in terms of backups, we've also got Richie Delat, Jeffrey Schlupp, uh, Christian Fuchs, and also Ben Chilwell. Uh, defensive midfield-wise, we've got Kante and Arnold at the moment, but also Inlet, Drinkwater, and King as backup. In terms of centre-backs, we've got Riedewald, Wimmer, and Kulu as the main ones, and then also um, Wes Morgan and Liam Moore as backups. Uh, Winger-wise, we've got Patrick Herman, who, of course, we signed last episode. Peony Sisto, and, of course, the main man, Riyad Mahrez, uh, as well as Francois Camano, as well as a backup. Andrea Lucami as well, but he's injured. And then in terms of strikers, we've also got Jamie Vardy, obviously, uh, Brill Donald Mbolo, Shinji Okazaki, and then that's kind of where it ends. We've also got uh, Joe Dodu as well, Stankovic, a few more youngsters as well. But we do need another striker to replace Andre Kromich, as you saw in the intro earlier on. And today, and right now, I am making that decision, and I sort of gave you guys an indirect vote last episode. Uh, because I've looked at Michi Batshoi and also Wissam Ben Yadair and you guys didn't really want me to d sort of differ from that option so you guys went with either Batshoi or Ben Yadair. Now I realise uh, probably a few more people commented Batshoi but I'm going to go for uh, Ben Yadair. Uh, firstly because he's cheaper um, but also he's the same overall. Ben Yadair despite being 26 does have a potential of 82 according to Sofifa and Batshoi only has a potential of 83. So yes Batshoi has one potential overall point more if you know what I mean but that's not really that much. Is that going to make much of a difference and Ben Yadair really does fit with my playstyle a lot more. He's got better work rates, so he's going to sort of press from the front, so he's going to actually close down defenders like Jamie Vardy and Shinji Okazaki do, whereas Batshoi's only got medium attacking and low defensive, so he's not really going to charge people down, work too hard from the front lines. And um, I think he just offers something we don't actually already have. I feel as if Michi Batshoi is probably a little bit too similar to Brill Donald Mbolo in that sort of strength power sort of scenario, whereas Ben Yadair is slightly different. He's got agility and balance and dribbling, and Despite being fairly small, he's got 84 jumping and pretty decent heading accuracy as well. So he's a bit more of an all-rounder, I do feel. Plus, he fits my play style a lot better. So it's actually time to see how he does in his debut. He won't be starting the game, however. That is down to Patrick Herman to make his full debut uh, in the starting 11. The £22 million signing from Borussia Mönchengladbach of the Bundesliga will be making his first start in today's first game of the episode against Sunderland in the Barclays Premier League. We're at the stadium alight, but here is the squad we are putting out. Schmeichel in goal, Delat and Schlupp as full-backs to cope with the very Pacey, Jermaine Lenz and Patrick Van Arnholt of Sunderland. Kanti and Arnold there as defence in mids. Mahrez and Herman making his debut with Okazaki and Vardy up front. And actually Herman would uh, be forcing stuff straight from the get-go, getting the first chance of the game there. The shot blocked, but it does fall to Jamie Vardy and a good save from Costel Pantillamon. Slightly lucky there, Jamie Vardy, to get the ball back, so I feel as if that was a bit of a foul there on the Sunderland defender. In the end, it was deflected wide for a corner anyway, of which nothing came from. But early good signs from Patrick Herman in just the first five minutes there, already making things happen. As you can see, though, Sunderland going forward there with a chance of their own Jack Rodwell firing the ball past the uh, corner of Kasper Schmeichel's goal. But as you can see, they're going forward again. It's fallen to Liam Bridcut. His initial shot is blocked by Kevin Vimmer, but unfortunately nothing the Austrian defender can do as the ball ricochets back to Bridcut, who fires the ball in. Pretty good finish, but a lot of luck involved that it bounced back to him. That's a Sunderland 1-0 lead. We've had tricky times playing Sunderland in the past, actually, as well. I remember playing them earlier on in Season 1, uh, very early on in the season. We actually ended up drawing a game 2-2, despite being 2-0 up. And we also drew against them in the reverse fixture in Season 1 as well. And we're hoping to get a draw out of this game, despite 
despite being 1-0 up, and despite Sunderland going forward there with Stephen Fletcher. Now it's the other winger, uh, Patrick Herman's teammate, Riyad Mahrez, going forward, and his deflected shot is saved very well there by Costel Pantilamon. Now it's Ben Yadair into the action. He's, he's producing a lot of movement already, but unfortunately unable to score thanks to an absolutely astonishing one-handed save. Look at that from Costel Pantillon. Nothing wrong with what Ben Yadair did. He came on for Okazaki, who did nothing at all. And Ben Yadair's getting into some really good positions, some fantastic run-making, but his finishing lets him down there. The volley was a hard chance there, but it does hit the side netting. But Ben Yadair trying his hardest again, and this time his effort and work does pay off because he's won a penalty under the challenge, I think, of Valentin Roberge. Not entirely sure for, you know, for definite who that Sunderland defender is. But Riyad Mahrez will take the penalty and score his third penalty, I do believe, of the season already. And pretty lucky, actually, it has to be said, with spot kicks already in this in this second season of this series. But that is another one converted from Riyad Mahrez. He's only missed one this season out of a possible four. And now we're going forward again. Jamie Vardy there trying to curl one into the bottom corner, but unfortunately uh, puts the shot just past the post. Inches wide, unfortunately. And that is how the game would end in the end. It is a 1-1 draw against Sunderland so yet again we draw uh, against the North East side as you can see Rian Morris they're getting man of the match after scoring the penalty but Patrick Herman had a very very solid debut look as if he's going to try and make things happen on a very regular basis and uh, I thought Ben Yadair was good disappointed he didn't score uh, thwarted by an incredible save from Pantelimon it has to be said and then a shot where he should have done better he also had a free kick as well that he put just over the bar um, but the signs are there. He's done pretty well. You know, his work his work ethic is good, and that's a good sign, uh, despite us drawing the game one or Also, Kevin Vimmer picked up an injury in that game, so he is now out for three weeks, unfortunately. As you can see in the background here, I'm about to show you some very much under-the-radar players, and I'm basically trying to sign another winger, because at the moment we don't really have a uh, youth winger, if you like, that we're just going to stick on in cup games. Um, we've got Francois Camano and Sisto, who are arguably the backup brigade behind Maris and Herman, but they're still pretty senior players. I feel as if we need a, an actual youth option that we can bring on in cup games without feeling guilty that I'm using up their stamina. Um, so in the background, you're seeing some sort of under-the-radar players. Edemilson Fernandez of FC Sion, Andre Duda of Ligia Warsaw in the Polish League, uh, Shari Tarajai of Grasshopper Zurich, who's an attacking mid, uh, and also Dalcio of Belenenses in the Portuguese League. And I've not heard of any of these players apart from Andre Duda, who was actually my players to watch out for series last year. Um, but they all came back with pretty extensive extensive uh, uh, sort of like inquiry responses and I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting inquiries to come back of about one or two million pounds and they weren't they were all above four million which is not the money we have we only have a uh, one million in the kitty in general uh, which isn't fantastic so we obviously we don't have the money to complete this transaction so we're gonna have to ask for uh, for some help from above and that is the board and we're going for a transfer funds request uh, entering the amount of four million pounds that's what we want in exchange for getting to the quarterfinal final of the cup instead of the round of 16 and I realize you probably don't need four million pounds in order to progress one sort of subdivision in the domestic cup but it was worth a try nonetheless and we'll have to see the result of that after today's Capital One Cup second round game against Swindon Town and hopefully we will be making a new signing as well after this game now I'm not entirely sure what division Swindon are in uh, in real life or at this point in the save but um, I was expecting a decent challenge because I played some lower league teams in uh, on this game before and they always seem to pose somewhat of a threat and I'm not really sure why I guess it's the underdog factor we did have the first chance of the game there as you could see a moment ago from the team sheet we do have a few understrength players playing like Ben Chilwell Goudinho as well in goal but Ben Yadera and Mbolo are starting up front and they have connected beautifully to score the first goal of the afternoon after 22 minutes Ben Yadera cutting inside from the right hand side and look at that perfectly timed through ball into Mbolo takes one touch and composed finish through the legs of the goalkeeper beautiful goal and fantastic link up play from our uh, from our strikers. Ben Yadair now forcing a save out of the Swindon goalkeeper after being put through by Sisto. That was a lovely little finesse effort and all the way into the 70th minute because this game was very very quiet up until then. Pione Sisto forcing another another fantastic save out of the Swindon goalkeeper and to be honest with you Swindon were pretty solid. They didn't really create too many chances but they were pretty good. I'm not going to lie. They were better than I was expecting. We did uh, hit the post there late on as well from Jamie Vardy and now Maximilian Arnold going forward trying to play through Briel Donald and Bolo. However, the pass, unfortunately, was delayed. Uh, the power bar did go up, but for some, unfortunately, for some reason, Arnold took an extra touch, and that meant that when Mbolo put the ball past the Swindon goalkeeper for the second time of the day, it was unfortunately offside. 
Uh, so the game does end 1-0 instead of 2-0. Of course, we do progress, but uh, against the lower league team, you would obviously be expecting uh, us, you know, being a Champions League team now, to be beating Swindon a lot more heavily. But, you know, they play pretty well. Props to them. We only win the game 1-0 in the end. And yet again, some very good sort of... some A good performance from Wissam Ben Yedder. I'm liking the look of my new signing so far. Very early to judge, however, how they're going to do overall. But uh, promising signs so far. Promising signs as well for making a new signing in this episode as well. Our second signing of the episode, because obviously we did actually sign Ben Yedder. Uh, in this episode, and that is because the board have actually, uh, they're actually willing to give us more money. Uh, 3.4 million pounds. I think getting to the quarterfinal of the cup should be a very easy task, to be honest with you. That's three wins in the Capital One Cup, two wins in the FA Cup, I think it is, uh, from the points we are at the moment. So it's looking pretty decent. We're offering there for, Sha is it Shari Tarashai or Shani Tarashai? I keep missing his first name. Uh, but 1 million pounds plus Johan Benelun, who we still haven't been able to sell, uh, to sell yet. And we're making the same bid as well for Ligia Vorsa was Andre Duda. Now, I decided to end our interest in Dalcio of Belenenses and also of Edemilson Fernandez of FCC. Now, if you don't know who any of the players are in this video that I've mentioned, uh, the links to their SoFIFA sort of page will be in the description so you can check out their potential and their attributes and whatever. As you saw a moment ago, though, both our bids for Shani Tarajai of Grasshopper Zurich in the Swiss League and for the Polish player or Polish league player Andre Duda, who I think is actually from Slovakia, uh, they were actually accepted. So, one million pound plus Johan Benelun, who we've never actually used in this series whatsoever, but for some reason just cannot seem to sell, so we're going ahead and making a contract offer. Now it is deadline day, which means we don't have too much time to get these deals done, but with seven hours to go, as you can see, we have actually had both the contract offers accepted for Andre Duda and for Shani Tarashai. Now this is good, they're both fairly capable players with decent overalls now and pretty good potentials as well and they're both completely unknown and that's what attracted me to them the most is that I want to make a signing that no one's ever heard of and actually make them some sort of legend um, of, of the squad and in the end we're going for Shani Tarajai, the Swiss guy from Grasshopper Zurich who has 81 potential I do believe, so getting him for £1 million basically because we're, we're never going to use Johan Benelun, so getting him off the books is actually a positive. So we've actually basically, we've, we've basically spent £1 million on the kid, and I think that's a very good deal, because I'll show you his attributes and his overall later on, and in comparison to the fact that you don't actually know who the kid is, his overall and potential are really very good, so I'll, so I'll show you his um, attributes and stuff in the squad report later on. We're also making a bid for another under-the-radar player who will end up being a sort of young prospect and backup player, and that is Luka Zahovic of Hirnenv. Now, he's a striker, 20 years of age. We're making a £2.7 million bid for him after the initial £2.3 million bid was rejected by the Dutch club, Heen and Veen. And with five hours of deadline day to go, you can see that Heen and Veen actually did accept the offer for the Slovenian striker that was actually suggested to me in the comment section for the last few episodes. Now, again, if you don't know who the kid is, uh, his Sophie for profile will be in the description below, and you'll actually see he's got pretty decent potential, and he's under the radar. You know, it might be a risk, but... You know, if he if he turns out amazing, that's a player you've never heard of who's suddenly an absolute god. And would that not be an epic point in this series? That's what I, I want to try and steer towards. That's the reason I bought Ben Yedder. Well, one of the reasons I bought Ben Yedder. Because he's lesser known and lesser used than Michi Batshoi. He's not someone that's bought in every single career mode. And I want to bring some new gems, some new hidden legends to you guys. And that's exactly why we're signing Shani Tarajai from Grasshopper Zurich and Luka Zahovic, the Slovenian striker, from Hinanvi. Now, I'll show you their um, uh, tributes actually in a squad report. And you'll actually see... They're actually a lot better than I was expecting. To say their initial uh, initial overalls were 68 and 70, respectively, Tarashai and Zahovic are actually pretty good. You can see uh, Zahovic in the background first. 83 agility, 82 dribbling, 74 finishing, good ball control, acceleration, sprint speed, balance, reactions, heading accuracy, uh, 20 years of age from Slovenia, 3-star weak foot, 3-star skill moves. And as you can see here is Shari, uh, Shani Tarashai as well, who we brought, uh, bought from uh, Grasshopper Zurich in the Swiss League. 73 overalls. Overall, at 21 years of age, good sprint speed, acceleration, agility, balance, 85 attack position, dribbling, ball control, curve, penalties, short passing, shot power. He's actually pretty good. We're going to play him as a winger or a slight of a sort of wide attacking midfielder because I, I used a 4-2-2-2. Formation, which means we end up with sort of wide attacking mids. That's where I'll play him instead of as a holding mid or as a striker. Purely because that's where I feel as if we actually need a player of that standard. So we'll give those guys their debuts either next episode or in future episodes. Hopefully they'll play a good 20 uh, sort of games throughout the season. And hopefully 
sort of try and force their way into the starting lineup because they look pretty good. I'll try and train them as well through various points in the say in this sort of season. Nevertheless, I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Three new signings, I think the most we've ever had in a, in an episode of this series. Uh, ben Yadair, Tarajai, and Zahovic. Ben Yadair being the main high-profile one, but hopefully Tarajai and Zahovic will prove their worth and actually end up being very good under the radar players as well. If you did enjoy, feel free to smash the likes button. Uh, sort of 100 likes would be mega as as always on this series, which is insane to even ask for. Subscribe if you're new around here as well, and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much, as well as telling me your thoughts on the um, the the signings that we made based on their so FIFA profiles when it comes to Zahovic and Tarashai, and also whether I made the right decision when it comes to Wissam Ben Yadair as well. But nevertheless, it has been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a good day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.